This is Pevensey Bay on the southern coast of England and out there is the English Channel which separates the UK from mainland Europe. Back in 1066, the Norman fleet set sail from France and crossed the Channel to invade Britain. They landed here on this beach and a few miles from here they fought the British army in the Battle of Hastings. The Norman army won the battle and King Harold, the British king, was killed. Over 800 years later, another invasion force was preparing to attack these shores, but this time the decisive battle wouldn't take place on the land. It would take place in the sky. I'm Annie and welcome to this month's edition of Young Eagles and part two of our Battle of Britain special. This is the Battle of Britain Memorial on top of the White Cliffs near Dover. In the summer of 1940, the skies above here were the front line of the battle to stop the German army's planned invasion of Britain. As we saw in last month's show, phase one of the German invasion plan called for the German air force, the Luftwaffe, to gain control of the airspace over southern England before the army launched its main attack by sea. Britain's Air Force, the RAF, were seriously outnumbered by the planes of the Luftwaffe, but they were prepared for the fight. The Luftwaffe's air attacks on Britain started in early 1940, but these were mainly raids on shipping in the English Channel and North Sea. The raids became much fiercer in July as the German Luftwaffe probed the strength of the RAF fighters and planned to wear them down ahead of the main attacks. The main attack started on the 13th of August, which the German Air Force called Eagle Day. Hundreds of German bombers and fighters flew across the Channel to attack Britain. The Spitfires and Hurricanes of the RAF flew up to fight them, even though they were severely outnumbered by the Germans. On the 15th of August, the Luftwaffe launched attacks across the country and all the way up to Scotland. This day saw the heaviest fighting of the whole battle as the Germans attempted to stretch the RAF to breaking point. Heavy fighting continued for several days, but the RAF held firm and inflicted heavy losses on the Germans. So much so that the infamous Stuka dive bomber was withdrawn from the battle. A few days of bad weather gave the Germans a chance to rethink their plans as the RAF were proving to be a tougher adversary than they had expected. And when the battle resumed, up to 400 bombers a day pounded the southeast of England. The RAF managed to inflict heavy losses on the Germans, but a lot of the bombers still got through. In the air and on the ground, the situation was getting serious. Although the RAF were exacting a heavy toll on the Luftwaffe, the RAF was losing more planes and pilots than it could afford, and it would soon become difficult for them to continue the fight. On the 7th of September, the Germans made a tactical mistake, which was probably the turning point of the battle. The Luftwaffe needed to defeat the RAF so that the German army could invade Britain, but the invasion needed to happen during the long days of summer, and the autumn was rapidly approaching. The Luftwaffe launched an all-out attack on London in an attempt to break the spirit of the British people, and heavy damage was inflicted on London, particularly in the docks and the East End. September the 7th was a victory for the Germans, but it gave the RAF fighter squadrons time to regroup, and on the 15th of September, a decisive battle took place. Waves of German bombers headed for London, but they were intercepted over the southeast of England by the RAF fighter squadrons. Most of the Luftwaffe bombers failed to reach their targets and over 60 of their planes were shot down. It was now obvious to both sides that the German plan had failed. The planned invasion was cancelled. Although the air attacks continued for another few months, the Hurricane and Spitfire pilots had shown that the Germans could not win the Battle of Britain. Spitfires and Hurricanes flew from fighter bases in the south of England, including Middle Wallop, where the Museum of Army Flying is located. 
Recently, I joined a group on tour of the airfield to find out more about its role in the Battle of Britain. You would want, therefore, you Colonel Paul Beaver, the aviation historian, took us on a tour of the airfield and showed us where the 609 Spitfire Squadron was based during the battle. We had a look at the hangars, some of which were badly damaged in bombing raids by the Germans. A defensive bunker that rose up out of the ground if the airfield was attacked by paratroopers. And even the 609 Squadron's former headquarters, which was located in this bungalow. And I was keen to find out more about the pilots themselves. What was the average age of pilots in 609 Squadron? Well, 609 was an auxiliary squadron, so it had already been set up during the war, so perhaps they were slightly older uh, than most of them, so their average age was between 23 and about 27. Some were married, some weren't married, some had just come almost straight from school. But most of the Battle of Britain pilots uh, were either separated into two groups, very experienced pilots, um, or very, very young pilots. And we're talking young, we're talking people 18, 19 years old, who'd had just a very small amount of flying training. And perhaps they came onto Spitfires with number 609 here uh, with only something like uh, 10, 12 hours of flying experience. So some of the Battle of Britain pilots were just a few years older than me and had only just learnt to fly. And you have to admire their commitment to fighting off the enemy attacks. We had a very interesting walk around the airfield, but what's the significance of the Battle of Britain to my generation? Well, I'm really glad that you enjoyed coming to Middle Wallet because it is a, a fascinating place. I mean, it is the only grass airfield that will be just today as it was in 1940. But the Battle of Britain was, was significant um, really because we're here today. I mean, you and I are able to sit here and chat about it because of the Battle of Britain was fought. The Germans in 1940 couldn't invade. Uh, the country because they couldn't get what's called air superiority. In other words, they, they, they didn't have command of the skies, which meant that aircraft would be able to attack their invasion barges. So this is all about our, our individual freedoms. We fought the Second World War because we didn't want to be um, uh, invaded by the Germans and have a different political system. So we have a free democratic system today um, because of things like the Battle of Britain. And in, in the Second World War, the Battle of Britain was the most significant um, of those, those battles. There are other battles that were important as well, ones in Africa, the Battle of the Atlantic, which went on for six years. But the Battle of Britain is a, is a sort of pivotal moment. And it's really important to remember it because over a thousand pilots died on the British side and over 2,000 pilots and air crew died on the German side. So it's important to remember them and what they did as well and all the people on the ground and everyone who supported them made Spitfires and Hurricanes and all of that. So just as important as 1066 and Battle of Hastings or 1588 and the, and the Armada. In 1066, the Norman fleet sailed a short distance across the English Channel and invaded Britain. They defeated the British army and killed King Harold at the Battle of Hastings. They very quickly took control of the country and the British way of life was changed forever. Over 800 years later, the brave pilots of the RAF defended these shores and fought off the invading forces. And in doing so, they preserved our way of life. And here at the Battle of Britain Memorial, we can remember those who gave their lives in the battle. The gratitude of every home in our island, in our empire, and indeed throughout the world, except in the abodes of the guilty, goes out to the British airmen who, undaunted by odds, unwearied in their constant challenge and mortal danger, are turning the tide of the world war by their prowess and by their devotion. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few.